Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Master Series. And like I said, today we are going to cover base defenses and um, zapper damage numbers and various tactics, okay, that you can use to defend your base. But I just want to do an update in the last video. Um, yeah, in the last video or in the last update, they changed the katana. They buffed the katana damage and they nerved the Bushman damage, okay? So what I've got with me here is Fuster's Machete, which um, which we think is compared to a Bushman, okay? So I'm going to hit Blue with a Bushman, and then I'm going to hit him with a Machete to see if the damage is the same. And then he's, Blue's going to hit me with a Katana once, and then he's going to hit me with a Cleaver once, just so that we can understand whether Fuster's machete is seen as a Bushman or a Cleaver, okay? And then, of course, just to update the damage numbers, guys, you know, so that the Master Series can stay updated. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to um, put this away, just stand in front of him, and then he's going to hit me once. Okay, so he hit me in the upper ad abdomen for... 90 damage. Holy poop. I don't know what the damage was, guys, but that looks like a major buff. Blue, do you agree? 90 damage with the katana. Seems like a major buff. Uh, okay, so that's an insane buff, guys. That is absolutely an insane buff. We have to... I just have to go back when we tested the katana, but I think the katana was like... Yeah, like 50 or 60 or something. So they they increased it by like 50%. But um, I will tell you guys in the comments what the katana damage was and what the katana damage is now. It was the lower abdomen, so it was in the chest. Now I'm going to hit him with Fuster's um, machete. Just look at your health, you know, just your 100% health. <laughs> 36. 36. Okay. So that looks like it's Bushman damage, guys. That looks like it's Bushman damage. Um, Where's the Bushman? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Drop the drop the cleaver. So that's 36. Drop the cleaver. There's a Bushman. Okay. So that was 36. Tell me when you're ready with your health. Okay. Okay, check your check your health. It's a hundred percent. You ready? Yeah. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Okay, guys. So they nerved the Bushman. I think it was like thirty-five or maybe thirty-two or something, but okay, but they didn't nerve it by a lot. It's still fifty percent stronger than most knives. Okay. But that means that um Fuster's machete is more like a cleaver. Tell me what your health is. 70. <coughs> and now? 35. 35. 70, 30. Oh, okay, guys. So the... So, um... Fuster's machete counts as a cleaver. Okay? It doesn't count as a bushman. It counts as a cleaver. So the yeah, his machete does the same damage as a cleaver, which is 35 to 36, which is still um, you know, a lot higher than any other knife in the game. And then the katana has been buffed insanely to 90 damage per shot. And in the comments down below, I'll tell you guys what the buffs and nerves is. So in the comments below, I'll type in the comments. Um, Katana went from this damage to 90 damage. And then I'll put in the comments the um, the Bushman went from this damage to this damage. And they didn't change the cleaver. So I think the cleaver's damage will be the same. But I'll put that in the comments for you as well. Okay? Holy poop. Okay. See you guys later. Cheers. <laughs> Very funny, Blue. Very funny. Oh, my word. <laughs> I am a Yes, guys. Let's get back to the base defenses.
Okay, 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 okay. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible. Okay, so this is the base that I showed you guys last time. And we're just going to go through some basic base defenses. Okay, the best way to defend your base against raiders or let them pay a price is, of course, with mines. Okay, so you get improvised mines, then you get prom mines. Okay. And you get small little mines that you can like put there in a bush. Small anti-personnel mine. Okay. And then you get the big mines. The anti-personnel mine. Okay. The big anti-personnel mine. Now, one thing I want you to focus on is when I'm running in third person. Okay. The big mine, the big green mine is, it gives you the biggest kind of bulge in the ground, which is quite easy to detect. Okay, um, the the smaller anti-personnel mine, of course, gives you a little bit, a little bit of a smaller, smaller little heap. Okay, and then your prom mine that you can hide, also quite big. Okay, but when it comes to these little um, improvised mines, they don't make huge bulges. Okay, so what do I mean by huge bulges? I've got two more mines here, and it's not that easy to see on the screen right now. Unless, because it's my flag area, if I hold in focus mode, then you can see right there, okay? Place the mine right there. So the bulge is very, very small. And then I can put one inside a little bush, okay? That's even more difficult to detect especially if you've got a ton of grass, okay? Like this is very patchy grass, but if it's in thick grass, okay, then your improvised mine, when you bury it, you first arm it and then you bury it and then it's going to be quite difficult to detect, okay? And of course, if you wanted this armor mine, you're going to have to like crawl um, to a mine because if you stand, okay, and you move too fast towards it, like you have to like really, really, really walk, okay? Slowly to a mine, if you want, if you don't want it to detect you. Okay, so just remember your movement. Your movement is very, very important. So here you can see we've got a bunch of mines, okay? Now the ones that you just place on the ground is very, very easy to detect. Okay, although if you put it in a bush or something like that, then it's, you know, it's quite difficult to see. But I just wanted to show you guys the difference between um, how easy it is to see a berry trap. Okay, and clearly the improvised mines are the best to hide because they don't leave uh, big bulges in the ground. Okay, and then your improvised mine is quite difficult because it leaves quite a big um, piece of sand here. The green big one is bigger and then the small one. Okay, but of course, there's various ways to hide it. One of the ways that I like to protect my base is, of course, like hiding mines right at the entrance. Okay, you guys already know what it looks like if it's hidden. And then the other way that I like um, using it is using a, a claymore where I put a laser detonator on. Okay, you can craft. I've got medium demolition, okay? So you can craft a laser detonator or you can craft a motion detonator, okay? So a motion detonator looks like that. That's what the radius looks like. Like if you've got no demolition skill, that radius will be much smaller. And if you've got advanced demolition, that radius will be a lot bigger, okay? Now, you don't want to, you don't want to put... A, a motion um, detonator too close to the wall because if the guy, if the raider um, triggers it on the outside, it's going to explode, okay? But he's not going to die. So what I like to do is I like to do this, okay? Now, this one is confusing me at the moment because if you put a laser detonator on it, the laser's going that way, okay? Not this way. But we're just going to trust that um, a normal claymore you have to let the bulge point that way because if you look at the back of a claymore, it says they're back, okay? The, the letters are highlighted, so this is the back of it. It's going to blow this way. 
And according to my memory, this claymore is supposed to blow this way because the grenade is here and the nails are here, okay? So it's supposed to blow this way. But if you put a laser detonator on it, the laser is going to go through to the back, okay? The laser is going to start here and go this way. So I don't like putting a... I don't like putting a, a you know, a, a laser detonator on this. But again, here we can see the trigger, okay? So the test that we're going to do today, again, I'd, li I'd like to put it at places where it's actually going to kill the person, okay? But we are going to show this. So I'm going to close the door, okay? And then I'm going to show you what happens when a person comes and stands in front of this door. And then, of course, there's various ways to um to kill a raider so this is one way okay there's not going to be anything in front of him but when he steps over that line okay like he might want to lean like the professionals lean okay so he's going to open the door when, when he's finished lock picking this door it's going to look like this okay so that 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 could um, that could save him, okay. Of course, if he if he closes the door, okay, then he could be in trouble. But in any case, um, this is why I like to put a trigger like this, okay. Not not that it, I don't want it to stand out too much, okay. But you can make it so that it's more the the radius is more like it. But I'm usually not there. Um, when somebody raids me, okay, so we're just going to test it out if, you know, if this helps at all. But the biggest thing that helps me when I'm online, getting offline raided, you can't help much for that because like the admin, I can, I can implement things to help with that. But there aren't many ways to protect yourself from offline raiding because the guy can just respawn, doesn't matter how many times you kill them, and then they'll um, craft this improvised metal detector, okay, um, which only takes a blue wire, a crutch, a radio, you know, uh, eight rags, um, a beer can, a hose, you know, and electrical tools. Then they can come and scan for any, and with the last update, um, that this um, metal detector, okay, can, can detect any, kind of metal objects okay so they usually use that to detect your mines but of course um yeah you know it's not all it's not all it's not everyone that does that but experienced raiders will use the metal detectors to detect it but the reason i like to use this one okay is so that there's a laser okay so what you can do is you can say Okay, when he, you can say when he opens the door, I want it to be here, okay? I want it to be here, the claymore, and then the laser will end here. So that if he just steps forward, the, the claymore is going to kill him. But we are going to test that, okay? So, yeah, going to try and keep this video short, guys, but we're going to cover a lot of things. So there you can see, okay, the first method, the best method to de defend your base with improvised mines, very easy to bury, you can hide them very, very easily. Then, you know, the second best way, also with the small little thing, is the small anti-personnel mine. Then you get the big mine, and then you get the prom mine. The prom mine is the coolest mine for me because when somebody steps close to it, okay, it's literally going to jump out of the ground and blow everything around it. But a claymore does the... kills a person at the furthest length, okay? So if this claymore explodes it's going to kill everything in his radius okay the only uh, only other thing that kills people at such a big radius like he can have his whole crew here okay if his crew is standing behind him and he opens the door and they trigger that then all of them will die okay the only other thing that has that kind of blast radius for me is the big green landmine the gr big green landmine has also got a major radius okay and then the last thing we're going to cover today is just the lock protection, okay? Uh, because we're just covering how to defend your base. So we're going to look at the updated numbers, and I'm going to show you how much, you know, what kind of protection you get with one basic zapper, how much protection you get with two basic zappers, 
one medium zapper, okay? Two medium zappers, and then one advanced zapper, and two advanced zappers, okay? I'm gonna show you guys the difference, and I'm, I'm using the master series to collect data myself as well, guys, to fine tune server settings, okay? Because the lock picking is a problem on most servers, so I am going to collect this data, you know? just to see what I can do with the uh, damage stats so that we can make it, so that we can allow the player base to construct more realistic bases, okay, with certain rules that I will publish on Sunday. I will publish my rules for Survival Evolved um, on Sunday so that everyone can look at them and discuss them, you know, and we can vote on them before the update comes out. So again, um, I'm doing this, you know, for myself as well. Like I say, the Master Series is a series where I learn with you guys. Not in all the episodes, you know, but when it comes to the, the numbers, um, that's really where my interest lies, okay? And to raid these six doors, we're going to use um, 120 advanced lockpicks, five screwdrivers, and 10 rubber gloves, Okay. And just show you guys how difficult it is for someone to raid you depending on what kind of protection you have, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out and then log back in with a different character because this flag belongs to this character <laughs> that I am now. So I'm going to create a new character so that this base doesn't belong to me, okay? So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the hiking backpack down here and we're going to start. First of all, with the uh, with the zapper, so that I can show you guys just how important zappers are, okay? And then we'll move on. We'll move on from there. Okay, guys, we're back, and this is a very very interesting thing, and that this is why I like doing tests constantly. You will see that the flag is now on the outside of the base, because I created a new character. Um, even changed my character's name, it didn't matter. Every time I create a new character, the flag that I planted inside the base disappears. Okay, so this is going to be quite a quite an interesting discussion. I haven't seen this before um, because I don't really create new characters on a server. You know, once I've got my character, I stick to my character. But I know a lot of clans, you know, usually wants to... Um, change their build. So very, very important, guys. My test server is a normal server. I don't do these tests in single player. Okay, that's why I've got a test server. And of course, we can do events on the server as well. Okay, so it's multi-purpose, but it acts as like a normal server. So as soon as I create a new character, my flag disappears. And this, then everything I've built belongs to no one. My traps um you know don't really trigger because i don't know i think because they don't belong to anyone i don't understand it uh, but none of my traps like i couldn't even trigger my traps guys i walked past my own traps without a flag so the the traps aren't supposed to belong to anyone so the traps you know is probably supposed to kill anyone but the traps didn't, didn't kill anyone, okay, which was very, very, very weird, so yeah, let's have a discussion in the comments down below, um, apparently now if you create a new character, your flag disappears, so if you and your clan created a massive base, and the clan leader or the guy who placed the flag wants to create a new character quickly, and he doesn't go check the flag, Okay, creates a new character and then just plays normally as if the base is safe. And then he thinks he'll just join the clan later again, you know, just be added to the clan later again. The flag that he planted is gone. And that entire base can be taken over by anyone. Okay, I'm not 100% sure, but this is what's happened to me. And like I say, the, my event server is a normal server. I try to create a new character so that, so that, like normally... When I create a new character, um, I can't get into the base that I've built, okay? Because the base doesn't belong to me. The base belongs to the previous character. But apparently now, 
if you create a new character, your flag that you placed just disappears. So if anyone, you know, has figured the new flag thing out with creating new characters, let's discuss it down below. Okay, so finally, here we go. Okay, so we've got a door here with a bronze, um, with a bronze lock and a silver lock. Okay, and then we've just got uh, basically 120 advanced lock picks, five screwdrivers, and 10 gloves. Okay, so we. The thing is, if you start, okay, guys, I'm back. We all have blonde moments, okay, but the flag thing is still true, okay? When you create a new character, your flag disappears, so that is very, very important. We are discussing ways to defend your base. That is a big no-no, okay? When you create a new character, you need to get back to your base as soon as possible if you planted the flag because you are going to need to replace that flag, okay? Is it a bit easier? I, th I think that's the only reason that the developers did it because people can't get back into their bases after they create a new character, okay? Because the base then belongs to their previous character. Um, so I think that's why they did it. Okay, we can discuss it in the comments down below, but I think that's why they did it. So just know that if you create a new character, okay, your flag disappears. Very, very important. If you're part of a big clan and you were the one that planted the flag, just let your clan know as soon as you create a new character, that flag is going to disappear and the base is going to belong to no one. Okay, so they're going to have to get you back to the base ASAP or they're going to have to put down their own flag, okay? Someone else is going to have to put down the flag as soon as you create a new character. As for me not being able to lockpick, it's just because I'm on the test server and I had no fame points. You cannot lockpick without fame points, okay? So let's get to the first door. The first door has got a bronze lock and a silver lock on. Now, the main thing that I want to show you guys is that doesn't matter how good I am, lockpicking has got a lot of luck, to it okay so i've got 126 tries here and every time i try it's going to cost me a fame point but without a zapper okay i can i can do this forever okay i'm not losing anything okay i'm not being shocked or anything like that okay so i can just if if i want to raid you offline i can just sit here forever okay and try and raid you okay there's nothing stopping me so this is a silver lock okay got very very lucky with this one there i'm inside your base okay there's no threat to me as long as you're offline i don't care if you've got three advanced locks okay you can see there i got lucky with that silver lock and I can get lucky with a golden lock as well, okay? So here it begins. At least one basic shock protection, okay? I've got 100 health, okay? So now when I try and lockpick this one, okay, two damage, okay? A basic, one basic zapper, okay, is going to do 2% two, two damage to me. Okay, 2.2 .2 HP. Okay. Yeah, we've, we're not we're not we're not bleeding or anything. So 2.2 um, percent HP. And I will check if the zapper damage is normal, but I believe it is normal. Okay. But I will let you guys know in the comments whether the zapper damage is set to normal. I don't think I've changed the zapper damage. So that means two divided by 50, and I've got normal health because my constitution is set to three okay so i've got normal um 97 i start with 100 hp okay so this is standard but this means i can only try 50 times without gloves okay but i can heal again remember because this is only doing um you know a normal bleeding injury i can lie down and heal from this and then go again okay so one basic zapper, okay? Ah. Ah. 
will damage you, okay? Then two advanced zappers. Two advanced zappers is 4.4, okay? So those, those were three. Now it's 4.4 damage, okay? For two basic zappers, okay? Now the problem comes in, if I've got gloves, okay? So 2.2 .2 without gloves, and then two basic zappers is 4.4, okay? Let me just set the... Set the weather here. Set the time to eight. Set the weather to zero. Okay, that's because of that sunlight here. Okay. Now, if I've got rubber gloves, immediately it shows me a red glove. Okay. So at least it, um, the sweet spot's going to be smaller for me now. So if I want to raid you, it's going to be more difficult for me to raid you because the sweet spot um, to open this lock is going to be much smaller, making it much more difficult for me, okay? But let's see how much damage it does to the glove, okay? One basic zapper. Okay? 1% damage. So if I, if I go to two basic zappers... Okay, so it's it's a little bit more. That's like three percent damage. Okay, so it looks like it's one and a half, one and a half damage, and three damage. Okay, roughly. Okay, again, eating on the gloves, eating on the gloves. So even just two. Basic zappers helps you because 4.4 damage means he's forced to use rubber gloves. Not only is he forced to use rubber gloves, okay, he can, I can still lockpick now without rubber gloves, but then I'm going to have to rest a lot, okay? But if I have got rubber gloves, I can do this for quite a while, okay? I can really try and get into your, into your base like this. And I can, I can have a lot of tries. Remember, there are people that are very, very, very good at this, okay? And like I say, I can get lucky. Okay, now, let's look at medium. So it's 2.2, 4.4. Let's take off the gloves, okay? 2.2, 4.4. Let's see now. Eight point two. Okay, so that was that was literally, literally double. Let's just check eighty five health. Eighty four. Okay, so it's four point four. So one medium zapper is equal to two basic zappers. Okay, four point four. So this is going to be 8.8. .8. Two medium zappers is going to be 8.8. .8. Okay. So it's 74. 74, yeah. It's about 8.8, .8, guys. Okay. So now it's getting serious. So now, when I use rubber gloves... The rubber gloves health is on 81. Okay, 77. So it damages the gloves about half, okay? Half of the damage that you will receive, the glove is going to receive, okay? But it's four. So four goes into 100 um, 25 times. Am I right? Yeah, 25 times, okay? So 25 times he can try, and then he's busted, okay? Now, so what, we, what we've what we learned now 
is that if you have to double the shock protection, then we're going to go from 8.8 .8 to 16. So I should just have 50 health left. Okay. Let me just check there. Let me just see. 4.442, 8.8. Okay. No, this one is probably going to be 8.8 for one. Okay. So we should, after this, if we get shocked, we should just have 58 health left. Okay. Okay, so that was six damage with one ad with one advanced zapper. Okay, six. So this should be twelve. So this will give us. Unfortunately, it's stacking. It's stacking at the moment. Okay, but this should be twelve now. So this should leave us at forty-eight. Forty-nine. Okay. So that means that one advanced zapper is going to take six health away from him, okay? Which gives him a lot less tries. Two advanced zappers, okay? He's going to be 49. About 12, okay? From 49 to 37. So it's about 12. That doesn't give him a lot of tries, guys. That does not give him a lot of tries, okay? So with two advanced zappers, he can try and lockpick this about eight times, seven times, okay, before he's dead. And now when we go to the rubber gloves, again, remember, the biggest thing about the rubber gloves, it's not only that he has to have rubber gloves, it's the fact that the fact that he needs to use rubber gloves is giving him a red glove signal there. So it's going to be much more difficult for him to get to the sweet spot, okay? If you don't add zappers to your locks, then he doesn't have to wear rubber gloves, so the sweet spot's going to be bigger for him, okay? So even if he's experienced, the rubber gloves are still going to make um, a big difference, okay? So two advanced zappers, 77 health. Five, okay? So that's 5% that the glove took. So with the glove, he can only do this 20 times, okay? He's only got 20 tries per rubber gloves, okay? With two advanced zappers. Now, two advanced zappers takes quite long, okay, um, to craft, but at least you know he's only got 20 tries, Okay, now on my server, Survival Evolved, again, I think this zapper damage is normal, but on Survival Evolved, it means he's only got 10 tries. Okay, with two advanced double zappers, he's only got 10 tries per glove. But of course, he can bring multiple gloves. Okay, just like he can bring multiple gloves to a kill box, he can bring multiple gloves to, to your base. Okay, so the main thing about this video that I want you guys to understand is that zappers are everything. Okay, I hope at one of the updates they give us like car protection because at the moment, if the guy is good at lock picking and he, you know, and he's got, um, he's, you know, he's got um, screwdrivers and lock picks. Again, you can only put a lock on a crate or you can just put a lock on a car and you can only put one lock on, okay? So I hope at some point they, which they have, you know, which they have talked about um, because of the new Mad Max cars that we're going to get, okay? You are going to have to hotwire a car or um, there's going to be security on the locks, okay? But just understand that your, your car and your crate needs to be hidden, except if you bury the crate. But again, a person can find a buried crate, okay, if he's very, very careful about it. But I mean, um, if you bury a crate properly, it's going to be very difficult for him to find it because you can bury a crate um, inside, a, inside a, a log that you, inside a tree, okay? You can put a flag inside a tree, not that I use any of these methods, guys, but there's lots of methods, okay? You can bury your chest next to the ocean. 
um, you know, a little bit underneath the water and stuff like that. There's a lot of ways to protect the buried chest, but you can't protect your vehicle unless your vehicle's inside the base, okay? So just understand, if your vehicle isn't inside the base, it's very easy for someone to steal your vehicle, okay? Extremely easy. I haven't lockpicked for a while, but let's see, with 10 gloves and double zappers, okay, if I can break into this base. So it's 24 minutes now, okay, 24 minutes and 30 seconds. Let's see how long it takes me to get through three and four locks. And I'm not very good. I'm not really very good, guys. Okay, guys, so that took, me, uh, that took me less than four minutes for two enforced locks, okay? I did not do any fine-tuning. What, what I, so I did this by luck, guys. With advanced, with advanced lock picking, I did this by luck. Luck means I did not fine-tune it when, it when it stops, okay? What do I mean by that? As, as soon as the lock turns, I just hold in my button. So as soon as it goes... I just hope I'm in the right spot like that, okay? Where if you get very, very good, then you're going to release your button where, where it stops. Like, you know, you're going to fine-tune it, when, it get, when, when it starts turning. Like there, you know, you can, you can, you can, release, you can release your F key, okay? So all I did is I just went... You know, I just looked for the for the sweet spot, and as soon as it turns, I just held in my button like that. Okay, no, no fine tuning. I just held in my button, which is pure luck at the end of the day. Okay, that that I will be at the right place. But that's how I went through those um, two enforced locks. And the one thing that I still struggle with is to release my. I'm very heavy on my F key. Okay. Where the and then of course because of my ping the the lock just jumps back into place, um, which is a bit frustrating for me. But like I showed you guys there, without any skill, just by moving the the lock and then holding in the F key, hoping that I'm at the right sweet spot. Okay, I I took two enforced locks in four minutes. So a very good lock picker can get, you know, can get into your base quite easily. And that's why I set my shock protection to double. Um, but I'm going to look at the, I'm going to look at the damage stats, you know, and maybe on the next wipe, like I said, I'm either going to make it so that people can't raid from Monday to Thursdays, or I'm going to increase the zapper damage to times three, you know. Um, I think times four will be hectic, but what I'd like is for the zappers, the advanced zappers, to do the same damage um, as they would do on in the kill box, okay? So if I take off my gloves, this is one advanced zapper, okay? And I want one advanced zapper to shock me for at least 10 health like the advanced zapper in the kill box does, okay? So I want this advanced zapper to do at least 10 damage to me, okay? So this is healing at the moment, which is stuffing us around, okay? So let's just lie down quickly, 
okay, and see what one advanced zapper does. Because like I say, I'd like to fine tune it. I think I'm going to make the zappers times three, okay, on the next wipe. Because I'd like this zapper on my door to do the same damage as the kill box zapper does, um, which is normally 10 health. It takes 10 health away from you, okay? If you've only got 100 HP, it takes 10 HP away from you, okay, when you fail it. So I would love to fine-tune this so that one zapper, one advanced zapper does takes 10 health away from you and two advanced zappers takes 20 health um, away from you, okay? So that a base door is basically twice as difficult um, as a kill box door because there's no timer. You know, you can sit in front of a base forever. Uh, the kill box is still difficult because there's a time limit to it. But when somebody raids your base, there's no time limit to it. So, you know, that's how I want to try and balance it. So let me lie down here quickly. And um, get to 100 health. And then see how much damage one zap on an advanced zapper does to me. And see how much I have to multiply it by to let it do 10 damage or more than 10 damage. Okay? That's what I'm going to look at. That it does 10... Um, I want to. I wanted to do ten or more. Okay, ten to twelve maximum damage for one advanced zapper. Then I know it's just as strong as. Uh, then I know one advanced lock protection is just as strong as a kill box because a kill box just has one advanced um, lock protection on it. You know, and then double lock protection will will definitely be difficult um, for lock pickers. But again. You know, we can always dis discuss it down below uh, because if you're an admin, you know, there's things that you can do to alleviate the the constant raiding and make it a little bit more difficult and bring C4s back into the game. You know, the need for C4s. Um, make the new players experience a bit safer, okay? When they're willing to grind, then, you know, um, it, it's like you can get advanced lock protection on your base within a week okay but the raiders are gonna have to log up you know the resources to raid you and because log hopping is a factor in the game um, or people that play 12 hours a day a day you know is a factor in the game um I have to I have to take that into consideration as well you know like even if you think hey the zapper damage is too much remember if I log up, the places that I can get rubber gloves and I log up the places where I can get screwdrivers, okay, then, you know, uh, like there's not a big difference between a bobby pin and an advanced lock pick, guys. So bobby pins, they can get with their eyes closed. The, the raider can get it with his eyes closed. He can get yellow screwdrivers if he log ops the motorcycle track. And he can gain a lot of um, rubber gloves if he log hops the five factories at the naval base or the five factories at the at the train station. Okay? I have to take that into consideration as well so that I make sure their grind is just as much as your grind. Okay? Because it didn't take me a lot, guys. I've still, I've still got, you know, I stuffed around with most of the doors, but I've still got like in, out of my 10 gloves, I've still got like in six or seven gloves left. So I only used three gloves to get through double, double advanced zappers, okay, with not much skill. And you have to realize that I'm not at, a, I think my lock picking is like at a, at a six or a seven out of 10, okay? But a lot of people's lock picking is at a nine, you know, between an eight to a 10 out of 10. With that fine tuning, as soon as the lock turns, they can, you know, they can release their F key until, you know, so they're very good with the fine tuning. When the lock turns, as soon as they get the lock to turn, they can fine tune it very easily for to get to the sweet spot. Okay, and I have to take all of these things into consideration, and um, with the next wipe. But let's discuss it down in the comments below, and um, yeah, let's see how much damage a single zapper does. Ow! 
Okay, so a single advanced zapper does 5.7, guys. So two, you know, two times zapper damage is a necessity. Two times is going to put us on like 10 point, no, it's going to put on us on, on 11.4. For one. And then he's going to put us on 22 damage for two. Let's just see how much damage it does to the glove again. So it's it's basically 5.7 for a single advanced zapper. And how much damage does it do to the glove? It's only three, guys. It's only three. That is way too little on the glove. Like 20 damage to you, you know, is excellent. But, okay, so if you've got double zap, it's going to be six. Six goes into that 10, 15 times. It gives you 15 tries per glove. So, yeah, guys, I can't really go higher than three. Okay? I can't really go higher than three. But in the comments down below, to try and, you know, um, focus on C4s or make our base, you know, make new players' bases a little bit safer, make it a little bit harder for the people that focus on raiding. Because if you don't focus on raiding, you don't, you know, like, I don't really focus on raiding because if I raid, I'd like to use C4s. You know, and I'd like to, um, I'd like it to be difficult, you know, for me to get in there. So for me to raid a big base must be a, you know, must be a big, must be a big thing. And again, if the big thing for me is I want this glove to be damaged really, really fast so that a person with 20 gloves, and it's not that difficult for a clan of five guys to collect 20 gloves, okay, within a week. Uh, but it's going to be very difficult for you to counter the resources that the clan got. Um, it's going to be very difficult for a solo player, okay, to get enough doors with double zappers and enforced locks on them. So in the comments down below, tell me if you think, you know, times three, you know, so that one single zapper does, um, one single zapper does nine damage. To a glove and yeah if if we make the zapper damage times three then a single advanced zapper is going to do nine percent damage to a glove and double zappers double advanced zappers is going to do 18 damage to a glove okay let's discuss it down in the comments below that might sound hectic to you. It's like in Luthais, if you make the zapper damage times three, then you can only try five times with, with a glove. You know, you can only have five tries with a glove. Yeah, just remember, if you bring 10 gloves, okay, you can try 50 times. Okay, he's got 50 tries. And if he's good... He's going to get through it quite quickly, guys. A good lock picker gets through an enforced lock within three to six tries, average, okay? A really, really good lock picker can lock pick an enforced lock within three to five tries. And then a guy that can lock, you know, a guy's lock picking that's that, like a 10 out of 10 lock picker can lock pick, you know, will get through enforced lock within three tries, that's one glove or five tries. So remember, you're saying, hey, this is hectic, Luthias. If they can only, you know, if they can only lock pick um, five times with a five times with a glove because it does 18% damage to the glove, that's a bit too hectic. Not really. He can get through an enforced lock. If he's good, he can get through an enforced lock with one glove. Okay. So if he brings 10 gloves, he can go through 10, 8, 10 enforce locks if he brings 12 gloves he can go through four doors 
Okay, if he just brings 12 gloves, guys, 12 gloves, that's roughly 100% durability, okay? So maybe he has to bring 15 gloves, which is not going to take him forever to, to get. But if he brings 15, you know, roughly 12 gloves um, to a rate, and remember, if they do, if if they are, if, if they are an active clan that plays a lot, they're going to get most of the cargo drops. The cargo drops gives you a hundred percent, you know, hundred percent rubber glove durability. And like I say, they can loot for it very, very easily. Okay, but just understand that with twelve rubber gloves, he can get through an enforced lock within five tries, on average. If he's between, if his skill level is between a, a nine and a ten. Okay, out of 10. So that means with 12 rubber gloves, he can go through four of your doors that has three, three and four locks on them and two double zappers and two advanced double zappers. Okay, and remember, I want to alleviate with the next wipe, I want to cancel people. I'm not going to allow people to build 10 doors that are stacked on top of one another, okay? One of the rules, again, on Sunday, I will give you guys all the rules for for the future, you know, of Survival Evolved. It's going to be a heck of a lot of rules, guys, but one of the rules is going to be that your doors has to be three meters apart, okay? Realism is going to be a big part of it. So when you open a door, there has to be space, like your next doors can only be here, because realistically, you can't open a door through another door, okay? That's not realistic. So a lot of my rules is going to be based on realism so that your doors can't be stacked, okay? The next door has to be three meters. This door frame is three meters, okay? So what I mean by that is... Okay, I can't build here, okay? But there you can see. There you can see, okay? Right here, okay, there. Your next wall is going to be here so that you've got space to move around your door realistically, okay? So rule is going to be that your doors must be three meters apart, okay? Again, I'm going to base on realism. You can't put a chair, okay? You're not going to be able to put a chair on a tower so that only you can access your base through your tower because the chair is blocking the the you know the person from climbing the ladder you can always just remove the ladder or you can build something later on to get into your base okay that's not realistic realistically everyone is supposed to be able to build something to get into your base okay but because of the flag system only you can build something to get into your base. The raider can't build something to get into your base, which is not realistic. So one of my rules on realism, okay, and so that we have beautiful bases on the server, is so that um, you can't do unrealistic things like that, okay? We have to put the base defender and the raider on the same level, and that's why I'm focusing on the zapper damage. Okay, so I'm probably looking, to be serious, guys, I'm probably looking at um, 18. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably looking at, for me at the moment, I'm looking at minimum times three zapper damage. Okay, remember, you won't be able to stack your doors. Okay, You'll, you're going to have to play on another server if you want to stack your doors. And if you, you know, if you don't like the realism effect, I think most players will, will enjoy the realism rules that I have on the server. You know, but of course, we're going to discuss the rules as well. But for now, I think um, times three zapper damage is is good, okay? Because we do we the the guys that do raid has got a very good lock picker, okay? And the people that don't raid, you know, don't really want to get raided, or they're not really interested in raiding. They just want to play the game, but it's going to upset them if someone can raid them and take over their flag because they don't play every single day, okay? So we have to balance everything out, guys. So I'm thinking of a minimum of times three zapper damage. You guys can say in the comments down below what you think, okay? I don't think I'm going to go higher than four, guys. So put your vote in the comments below. 
okay times do you think times two is the best times three is the best and i th don't think i'll ever go higher than times four you know or times four so in the comments below vote for times two zapper damage times three zapper damage or times four zapper damage with the information that i've given you and now that you know how good rock pickers really are okay um yeah and I'll see you guys tomorrow again. Like I said on Sunday, I'll on my Discord, I'll release my 50 rules, which might sound insane, but a lot of the times when you know when somebody breaks the rules, they say I didn't say that rule specifically. Okay, um, like when I talk about base exploits, you know, they're gonna tell me I didn't know this specific thing was a base exploit, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to stipulate every single rule specifically to how it can be broken okay like base exploits i'm gonna to have to explain the base exploit so that if a person uses another base exploit i'm you know i can easily tell him look here you know let's not you know let's not beat around a bush you understand what my 10 rules meant with realism okay and you still use an exploit that i didn't maybe know of but at least you you because of my 10 rules regarding exploits you understand that you just but you just used one that i didn't mention in the rules okay um so that's going to be it guys i hope you guys have a great day and yeah um we're still going to discuss very very interesting things and i'm i'm really excited um you know about the info that we're going to learn like i said i'm learning with you guys here um so yeah, we've got a lot to, to discuss. And like I say, see you guys tomorrow. Cheers. Sorry, guys, we never looked at the traps. Let's let's cover that quickly. Okay. So we know there's a sensor on the other side of this wall. Okay. Sensor's not going off. Let's see if the prom mine's gonna go off. Okay, there's the prom mine. How close do we have to get to the prom mine before it goes off? Quite close. Okay, so we literally have to be, we, you literally have to step on top of the prom mine because you can't really put a motion sensor on it. Okay? So, yeah, we literally had to step right on top of it. Okay. So that, so now we know, you know, you physically have to step on top of a mine for it to explode. So, you know, if you're careful, okay, then of course you can see, I think all of these mines went off, okay. The, the mine inside here, the claymore inside here didn't go off. So let's say I lockpick this door. Okay, we've got that mine over there. Nothing's happening. Okay, nothing's happening. So that was the laser, this is the motion. Okay. So the motion sensor will not trigger outside of the wall, okay? It will only trigger when you're in direct line, in the indirect line of it, okay? Which is great, which is great. Just remember that the, the, the alarm will go off when the person hits the outside of it, okay? What do you mean by that, Luthias? The, the alarm that I put on the corners will go off. Again, the alarm has also got that red radius, okay, around it. What do I mean by alarm? Um, this silent alarm, okay, does have a laser detonator, okay, connected to it. So it will have a red zone around it. So if, as soon as someone comes and stands against your wall, okay. And again, guys, the, the, 
you know, that, that prom mine destroyed most of the other mines. Okay? So, explosion and explode. Don't put your mines too close to one another because it can create a chain reaction. Okay? But what I'm trying to tell you is that that motion sensor over there. Okay? The motion sensor is gone now. And this one, this, yes, see, that claymore destroyed everything, okay? So that claymore destroyed the alarm that we put there, okay? But if you put the alarm down here, okay? I won't be able to put it down because the flag doesn't belong to me. But if you put that, if you put the silent alarm against the wall, it will also have a red radius around it. And then if somebody comes and, comes and activates it, so he's on the other side of the wall, Okay, trying to lock pick like you can put a silent alarm right here. As soon as a guy comes and stands in front of your door, you can name that silent alarm um, front door. Okay. And then when that silent alarm goes off, it will tell you the front door has been triggered. So then you know someone's in, you know, in front of your door if you're online. Okay. And you're not at your base. And um, so, you know, if I like this silent alarm because it can trigger while he's on the outside and he can't see it yet, okay? If he's, a, if he's an advanced a lock picker, he can do this, you know? He can do this to see if there's, he can go like this, you know, to see if there's any traps there, okay? And then he can try and defuse those, those traps. But with the silent alarm, when he just comes and stands here to lock pick, the silent alarm that's behind the door has a red circle around it and it will notify you. Okay, that he's activated that that specific silent alarm. I just want to see if I can get outside of the base radius here. Okay, just want to show you guys here. So set. Guard uh, mode true. So then we go here, yeah, craft. Put it down. Set name, okay? So now you can go front door. Front door. So you put that behind the door, okay? Front door, and now you arm it. And now you'll see the zone, the, the trigger. Again, the higher your demolition skill is, the bigger the trigger will be, okay? So now, when the person comes to your door and he lockpicks it and this is behind the door, then he's inside the circle and the alarm will go off, and you're in the top right-hand side where it says, you know, a cargo drop has landed, it will tell you that the front door alarm has been triggered, okay? So that you know where, where they are. Another great thing that you can do is if you've got silent alarms on all the corners, okay, so you can put, a, you can put an alarm down um, front, front left corner. Okay, so if this person's trying to hide from you here, okay, then the alarm's going to go off. You'll see the alarm trigger here, and then you can maybe throw a grenade to him or tell your friend where this guy is standing, okay? Or maybe they've killed you, and you use the tactics that I showed you, okay, to hide in the tree line, and then they activate the alarm so that you know where they are at your base, okay? So... Um, front left corner alarm, okay. Middle middle left wall alarm. You can you can give all the alarms different names, guys, so that you know where they are outside the base. And you can put alarms inside, okay. So you can put alarm behind this door that says, um, yeah, that basically says. Second front door alarm. And again, this the 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 grenade is on this side, guys, but it's not it's not it's not activating. So it says it's gonna activate when I'm in front of it. Okay, so remember that the improvised claymore does not explode on the side where the grenade and the nails are, okay? The claymore explodes or is triggered on the, on the side where the chip is, okay? So the grenade and the nails must point to you, okay? If you, if you 
place it down. The grenade and the nails must point to you. It's going to explode to the closed end, okay? The, the Like it's bent forward, you guys saw there, okay? It's not going to blast, it's not going to explode to the side where the grenade and the nails are. It's going to explode to the other side where the little computer chip is. And that's why a laser detonator, you know, goes towards that. So that doesn't make sense. Just remember that when you walk, work with a normal claymore, it will tell you that, you know, what is the back side of it, which works perfectly, okay? But with an improvised claymore, it's not going to explode on the side where the grenade and the nails are. It's going to explode to the other side. It's going to be triggered to the other side, okay? Like, like I say, we're learning, we're learning a lot of things here, okay? So yes, I hope the I hope the silent alarms, you know, helps you a lot. I hope you don't stuff up uh, improvised claymore. Okay, it's going to be very disappointing if to place an improvised claymore like I just did. Okay, but then it doesn't kill the raider because if it was a raider and he opened that door and he saw the claymore in front of him. He could just use a wire cutter, okay, and disarm that claymore, and that claymore is basically useless. But if the claymore was pointed in the in the right direction, okay, then I would have died as soon as I opened the door, okay? Various things that we can focus on and that we can learn. So, again, if you guys have got any questions, leave it down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Like I say, we're learning a lot together. Cheers.